Welcome to the Arts to Hearts podcast, a show for artists, creators, creative entrepreneurs to have heartfelt conversations about living a creative life and a career. As you go into this show, hear your favorite creators talk about money, mindset, business, creativity, and everything else that goes behind into making a life that we all adore as an artist. Hear the messy and the wonderful side of being a creative. I am your host Charaka Arora, an artist, creator, and founder of Arts to Hearts Project. Thank you for joining me here. Take a comfy seat and be ready to take a peek inside hearts of your favorite creatives. Let's jump right in. Before we dig into this episode, I quickly want to remind you about our first open call of 2022. Yes, after a wonderful year of creating so many opportunities for our community, we are back with a bang in 2022 with our first international open call. The theme for this open call is treasured moments and we are so excited to be collaborating with Photo to Way magazine and the founders of Photo to Way magazine Juliana and Twiggy for this open call. The open call ends on 7th of February 2022 and you can find all the details to submit the link to submit in the description box below or you can go to www.artstohatsproject.com/submit in this open call. The selected artists will be, of course, be a part of our virtual online exhibit, a video that we always do on our featured artists. Um, the Photo Today magazine will also be covering a few artists in the issue seven of the print and the digital media board. So that's really exciting, and of course, we will be covering so many other places like a blog, Instagram, website, artist spotlights, and so much more. This open call is. open for international women artists working in painting mixed media collage drawing and other medias we are so excited to see this exhibition come to life it's going to be first of 2022 so definitely it's going to be really special and if you are looking then this is it go to www.artstohartsproject.com/submit and we are so excited i can't wait to see your submissions Let's get back into the episode now. Mwah. Hey you guys, welcome back to the Arts to Hearts podcast. I have two very special people with me today. Abby and Stuart. If you don't know, these two amazing people I met over a year ago, I think, maybe a little more than that. And these two people that I have is truly an honor because I absolutely adore. I think they were the If I've ever experienced best customer service, it's definitely from them. I have the founders of Shop Dot Canvas with me today. If you're an artist, you must already know. If not, you definitely need to check it out. Welcome to the podcast, Stuart and uh, Abby. Thank you. Thanks. We're Good so to be happy here. to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. So I met you. I discovered you guys over. I think. You when you were launching, or you just launched um, Shop Dot Canvas, and I remember, I remember, I think Trupti from India, she had recently bought from you, and she had shared it on her Instagram, and I found, and I was like, I really wanted to get this to India, and you were very kind. I truly, you know, more than anything, it was such a hassle to bring the um, the canvas. to india because at that point you were still not shipping to india and i remember no. how kind two of you were and how i still you know this is something that i really need to say today because i haven't really had the chance to say this verbally to you but because of to because the way you were you know how supportive and the whole experience was just so good that i've never ever forgotten it never Oh, that Thank means you. so much to us. I feel like that's something that we always want our customers to feel because, as small business owners, like we we appreciate every single person that trusts in our product and wants to support us. So we want them to feel just as loved and supported as well. So that that really you means so are much doing to us. such a good job. Thank Kudos you. To that. Thank okay, you. first before we get into all of this. I absolutely I'm so much more interested in knowing both of you together and individually. Uh before canvas and we go into everything about canvas and your journey in these last two years. Let us also know 
who you really are and who you were before this. Mm-hmm. Would you want to start, Stuart? Firstly, welcome All to right. the podcast. You are probably the first male I have here. Awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> It's great to uh, great to be you know setting records. <laughs> I'm a I'm a trailblazer. Um, yes, you so, too. <laughs> so before um, before so yeah, the uh, shop canvas is a, a pretty new um, venture for me, and and you know like you said we we met a little over a year ago, and I mean the canvas journey started a little over a year ago, so I mean it doesn't go back much further than you, um, which is awesome. But, um, you know, we, we launched in January of 2020. Um, and you know, my idea at the time is that it would be a fun little side project, um, to, you know, play around with this idea that I had and this little product that I, um, came up with. And, um, you know, if it could be a little side project and if it made a little extra side, um, income, it would be fun. Um, and then quickly it turned out to be something much bigger than that. And so, um, really ended up kind of reorienting my entire career around it. Um, so before canvas, I was in uh, commercial, um, film and, and videography. So, uh, created Ooh. TV commercials and um, website videos and social media videos for uh, everything from like super big brands um, that, uh, you know, are, are worldwide brands to, you know, local mom and pops that needed a little website video for their um, small business. Um, so obviously got a lot of experience in the video production world, but also in the marketing world and uh, communication. That's, that's how you're raising it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really how the, I mean, obviously that's like the, where the idea came from. Um, one of my biggest clients, uh, was, and, and we still do a lot of work is HGTV. And, um, we, you know, we, uh, constantly made those overhead top down videos of yeah. people doing crafts or, uh, creating or whatever. And, um, you know, the more we did those, the more I saw how like the, the setup to, to capture those is, is it's just tricky. And, um, so kind of started to think about a way we could do it better. And that's where canvas came from. So anyway, I was in film and, um, video for about 10 years. Um, and, uh, you know, have, have kind of been fading out of that and into this new venture over the course of the past year, year and a half. Wow. That's so interesting. And now I always had this tinge. I felt like, because, you know, your image making was fabulous since the beginning, even when you were just sharing a process, like, you know, some behind the scenes. And I think, um, you've also like, you've really been very good with your content, uh, the way you guys write and like, you know, share. And it, it always felt that way that, you know, there was a lot of, um, maturity and you know I think you just know it when something is very well put together and it feels like you you just sense that oh thank sure. you well thank you yeah I mean uh, I uh, spent 10 years you know creating video and content for clients to advertise their products and now it's like so interesting because I get to be my own client and so it's like <laughs> the best of both worlds I get to be yeah. creative yeah. a video producer but also I get to be the client and kind of you know, craft the right content for, you know, our audience and everything. Mm-hmm. So it's fun. It's, it's definitely uh, been new, you know, a new kind of like skill <laughs> being yeah. the client. But, uh, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. I feel like, yeah, uh, the experience I have in that world has definitely contributed to, uh, you know, yes, the, the, yes, that all of the marketing, is. the content of Canvas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would agree. What about you, Abby? What were, what was going on with you? Well, um, Stuart and I actually used to work together a ton on set because um, I was more in the food world. So, well, I worked as a production assistant on a lot of the shoots that he would do, but then moved into food styling. So on a lot of the video and photo shoots that he had, I would assist the food stylist and help make all. I was basically what I say is the equivalent of like a sous chef at a restaurant, but for (laughs) video and photo sets. So I would... (laughs) <laughs> all the food and um, you know have to do all the little detail work for um, photos and videos that he would shoot for these clients. So um, I've kind of always been around that creative world the same. Um, so 
yeah, it's super fun. I feel like it, it is really cool, like he said, to see everything that we were doing on set and be able to apply it to this product too. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my background. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, amazing. That also means that it's not for the first time, like for Canvas that you've been working together. Both of you yes. were also like working to- together before that. Yes. Which is, we always, it's not lost on us how special and, unique that is you know as a married couple to be able to work together so often and um yeah we actually just celebrated nine years of marriage so oh wow congratulations thank you thank you yeah for most of that you've been self-employed like the Mm -hmm. first year of our marriage is when he started his video business so um yeah so I feel like it's been I feel like it's it's just really cool to look back on all the things that we've learned over the last nine years and see how we've been able to apply them to Canvas. So amazing. How does it feel? How is it for you guys? Like, you know, to work together as partners? Um, Also, like, I think um, entrepreneurship in its own self. And once you're also working with your own partners, it's very easy to not have boundaries and, you know, to bring home, like bring work back home. And like, you know, how was, how has that journey been for you guys? A journey. Yeah. <laughs> who's the workaholic? Who, who's the workaholic? Who brings work home the most? Not me. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like it's something that we're constantly having to work on because it is, something where it feels difficult at times to just be like, okay, we're done for the day, you know? And we even say, especially because we do have so many international customers now. So at the end of the day, when we're winding down, a lot of our international customers are getting up for the day. I can feel that. (laughs) Yeah. A whole new wave of DMs and stuff. So Stuart, once we got to a certain point, especially because I feel like at the beginning, drawing boundaries was way more difficult just because we were trying to constantly like be super on top of customer service and always available and all the things. But now we kind of know like, okay, we need to establish regular work hours, like 8, 8 a.m. to, you know, 5 p.m. or whatever is our work day. And then we need to, like, I've started physically logging out of Instagram after a certain time of day. So I just don't get it. That's such a good I don't practice. get any notifications at all. Yeah, in a in a weird way, I mean, truly, like I kind of joke about me being the one to take <laughs> work home, but truly, like I'm I'm the one like forcing her to stop <laughs> responding to DMs because I'm like, I'm like people understand it's like you know there is a work day and there's right. like you got to go home and sleep at some point, so like people will understand <laughs> if you don't respond for eight hours. Yeah. But she's like, no, they want me to respond now. <laughs> um, so I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting better though. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It has been a journey. And I mean, yeah. I, I mean, part of the, uh, you know, it's a dangerous thing, but it's also a, a great thing is that we truly like love what we're doing so much that like, yes, it's so hard. Know, we're just, yeah. We're just yes. so like excited to talk about everything that's happening that like, you know, it doesn't feel like bringing work home. Mm-hmm. It yeah, also doesn't feel I like can, work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so yeah, I, mean, I I and my boyfriend we also work together uh, apart from us who I brought. I think the most difficult thing a lot of times is that most of the times, like it's so hard to keep things out of that conversation, and how swiftly and smoothly things transition from, you know, your personal. Now I'm sure with kids it gets a lot different because you're forced to go into another dimension. Yeah. Right, but right. I'm sure it's it must be so hard. I feel like you have when you're so passionate about something that you're doing, it's con it's, it constantly is going in our heads. You know, we're always, always, even yeah. when we're not working on it. And when you have your partner along with you, you keep like it's so hard to not talk about it. Yes. Yes. I mean we do we do things like every now and then where we should probably do more where it's like Hey, this is designated like not talk mm-hmm. about Canvas time. Like, even if there's, <laughs> you know, it, it's like we enjoy it, doesn't feel like work and all that. It's like we force ourselves to like 
you know, go on a date and we're not allowed to like talk about anything related to work <laughs> at all. Um, you know, day in, day out, it's kind of, it really is hard to like keep those boundaries, but we do, we try to stay intentional, you know, about taking some, yeah. you know, carving out some little chunk of time right? Uh, ever so often to like, you know, totally, mm. totally, I don't want to say it, but kind of like a detox, like totally detox from talking it about It is work. essential as much as we don't, we like it's hard and we don't want to do it but it's so essential because we want to come back fresh and at some point you understand and we like because uh it gets tiring and it gets over exhausting and the burnout edge it's just so so much there it's just and the good and the thing is it I think also when you work with your partners um it's also this thing that you know, one if one is working over the edge or like you know overworking the other, it's very difficult to separate the two. And sometimes it's just not one person, but two people together get going off the cliff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think it, like you mentioned briefly, another dynamic of it for us is obviously the kids. So when we get home, our focus quickly shifts to. <laughs> feeding the kids dinner and like, you know, just wanting to spend time. time. Yeah. Wanting to spend time with them before you go to sleep because it is such a short window before while we have to do like dinner, then bath and bed. Like it's just such a short window of time to spend. So we want to be more intentional about having that time be family time and time that we focus on like their days and just being with them. And I think that that in a way helps draw those boundaries. Yes. Yeah. So, that's true. Okay, my next question: Did you like? Did you ever think of owning your like? Uh, of course, I know Stuart uh, owned an agency, or he was working for video. But did you think ever think about having like a product based uh, like business, or like you know, like a business like Canvas, not particularly a product? But did you ever dream of or either of you or both of you together? Uh, I mean. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like you did. I, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, just totally upfront. Like um, ever since I started my video business, um, you know, I've like seen the value of, you know, you have the two two categories: products and services. And video has always been a service business. And um, you know, the there's certain great things about a service business, but there's also certain hard things that both have their pros and cons. Um, yes. So I'm like, like I kind of said from the uh, a little earlier, you know, my intention wasn't necessarily from the beginning to completely shift and become only a, a product business, uh, but I just saw that value in creating something that can be um, productized, you know, and yes. um, something that like where it's not directly tied to like my time and my labor and my um, interest. I could create like a, a, a machine, so to speak, and, and build a, a structure that kind of runs itself um, yeah. and sells a product that's easier to kind of, you know, automate to where it's, it's not a one-to-one like time to <clears throat> time to how much uh, you make from it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so I, I was kind of originally thought of it. I mean, for one, I just in general like uh, building things, and I just thought, hey, it would be cool to have a little side business that's going. Um, but on the other hand, I was like, um, products are there are so many pros about having a product based company. It's like it'd be great to just diversify and have, you know, product a product in addition to kind of my service based business. Yes. Um, so e commerce has just always really interested me because yeah. it's. I mean, like the fact that we're talking right now, it's like this has never been possible before, you know, in with this level of ease, you know, meeting people all the way around the world who have a need for a a product that you can provide and then being able to get it to them and actually form a relationship. It's just something that like has literally never been possible in the history of the world. And I always saw that as just a cool opportunity. Um, And so, you know, we we kind of dove into it with modest expectations uh, but you know, there were some expectations there. There was some excitement about having a product based business and, um, and then, you know, yeah, what it became, what it has become so far has just so far exceeded even those expectations. But, uh, <laughs> Did you ever expect that it would skyrocket like this? 
No, I mean, I would obviously be lying if I said I didn't yes. hope it would. Because, you know, in the back of your mind, you're always like, man, that'd be yeah. so cool if it just like exploded. And like I tell people all the time, I just feel like this really is kind of like a dream come true and mm-hmm. just a classic dream come true scenario. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I, I didn't expect it to take off like I expected. I think we, we wrote out a business model for like the entire first year. And, <laughs> you know, uh, my plan was over the course of a whole year to be kind of consistently selling like 20 a month or some 20 units a month or something. And, you know, we, we, uh, blew past that in like the second or third month we were doing it. And then now it's like, you know, we're just so far beyond even those were kind of my expectations of like, all right, this will be like a huge success. If I'm for selling 20 a month by the end of 2020, that would just be a tremendous success. And, um, yeah, it's just so far surpassed that. It's just, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of mind boggling. Certainly hoped that it would become yeah. what it has become, but ne- never in a million years actually thought it would. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done enough uh, little business startup things in the past to know how hard they are and how like yeah. when you're the founder, you love what you're creating and you you really yeah. believe in it. But but it's really rare to have something that like. Uh, everyone else immediately believes in too. Yeah. yeah. The value in. So That's yeah, I had pretty true. modest expectations for sure. Yeah. Well, and for as long as I've known him, really, he's always talked about just ha- like loving everything that has to do with being an entrepreneur and what that means. Yeah. And like he has, he has the creativity, but he like his, he got his college degree in mechanical engineering. So he also oh, has wow. that mathematical scientific side to his brain too that like he Mm -hmm. loves numbers and excel spreadsheets and all the things which i feel like (laughs) is like such a an abnormal thing to find in someone who truly is creative as well so um i remember like when we were in the thick of him starting his video business like always saying i would love to start a product-based business one day and like always having that as a dream but that was before canvas was even a thing oh yeah yeah and i mean like i said i came up with several product ideas before this and they're like you know they're funny to think about now <laughs> but um i was always just trying to come <clears throat> come up with something uh yeah you know, i get that feeling. and yeah <laughs> and usually they're they you know the thing i always have said is like you know you're just you're kind of taking steps uh in the dark but you're always trying to like take steps in the right direction so like all my ideas i came up with were some sort of video thing like an accessory or like an add-on or a new, a new video tool and just none of them uh really ever materialized until this one but it, it kind of caught on uh and so yeah the rest is history as they say <laughs> love that that means you always had creative on like you were a creative but your entrepreneurial spirit or the desire to like i think it's also the compulsive um compulsiveness to do keep keep experimenting or keep doing uh, things yeah. even for me like for so many years in the past 10 years I have I have started so many things tried so many things failed at so many things yeah. but even then I think once you start doing so like keep experimenting the fear also of failing goes away because you fail so many times that you you you're just like you know it'll be just one more thing that you'd create and then you know, once if it doesn't work out, what if there's there's so many other things that haven't worked out in the past? Did you yeah. have this fear of um, because starting a business is not always it's not all it is never rosy. It it looks rosy to a lot of people on the other side, mm-hmm. but it's very hard. It's it's commitment of time, effort, money. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's like venturing into the unknown, and you do it. You you do that every day. Did you, yeah. what were your fears when you started Canvas? It's a great question. Um, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, fail. Uh, I never really fear. Uh, yeah, I'm getting all my words mixed up. I never really feared <laughs> failure, so to speak. Like, um, I kind of expected it, like, honestly, <laughs> to fail. But, yeah, because uh, also, just, it, oh, you expected yeah. it to fail? Well, <laughs> that, I mean, just because. I'm just overly realistic and I'm like, I mean, honestly, you know, there's a, there's a difference between what you hope will happen and then what you like anticipate will happen. And then what you like in your deepest part of your mind, you really. 
<laughs> but see, the thing I've kind of learned is that for me at least, and I think I think this goes for a lot of people, uh, is that like failure in a lot of ways is like a kind of like a fuel that drives you to yes. keep going. To where like yes. if things are like I just learned about myself that like if I just do the same exact thing um, every single day with no problems and no challenges, I just really quickly get yes. really bored, bored and it's really hard yes. to find motivation. So it's almost like the problem, like I feel like as an entrepreneur, your, your number one skill set has to be problem solving. You have to be a good problem yes. solver. And, yeah. um, and I just feel like every, every time there's a problem, you know, um, I, I just have never been one to get all flustered by problems and like, shut down it's like i immediately go into like problem solving mode yes and until we get a solution you know there's always a solution and sometimes it's not ideal but you know always a solution so um yeah i mean i i think part in in a sense it's like the 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 kind of the fear of failure and the challenge and the risk is is really what allure you know it's kind of alluring to me in the first place because it's like almost like a game you know it's either you win or you lose and I feel like the more I, the more I come against challenges, and the more I do actually lose, the more it just frustrates me and makes me want to like you know keep keep pressing until we until we win. And then as soon as we win, it's like see my challenge is the opposite. <laughs> when you win, I don't stop to celebrate. I'm always like, all right, what's next? You know, like, <laughs> what's our next? Challenge? Um, yeah. And so we're trying to, we're trying to really make a habit now of celebrating the wins and celebrating Love our. That. That's so essential. That truly is because it's it's hard to you know in because you 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 said this so rightly because I think that's also I as a creative entrepreneur and as an artist like even if I see as a creative I think this is something I see a lot of similarity between these two um, professions careers because probably I've lived both and both feel very like. There's no other way. I mean, I can't can't separate my entrepreneurial spirit uh, from myself, and I can't separate the creatives mm-hmm. because. And I feel that they're very. I think entrepreneurs are creators, and I think I also associate yeah. myself as creators more than just you know painter or like you know something like that. Because the yes. need, the compulsiveness, is to keep creating something. It could be in different forms, mm-hmm. different businesses, products, services. Mm, and sometimes it, it like sometimes even making like something as as compulsive because even making food is something that makes me feel so happy because that mm-hmm. it it gives me that satisfaction that even if it was a day off but I did create something in whatever yeah. form that is. Um, yes. Abby, did you did you have entrepreneurial spirits um, before you started Canvas? Did you think? Uh, uh, Yes, I would say so. When Stuart and I first got married, I actually did a lot of catering. Um, so oh, wow. I worked at bakeries. And, so you've been um, hanging everything food, like that's been yes. your zone. Yes, yes. When we got married, I well, I grew up um, in a household of women that loved cooking and were passionate about cooking and growing their own foods and, you know, doing everything from scratch. Wow. So I was always around that, but never really had a super big passion for it until Stuart and I got married. And then just kind of, when I started cooking for us, I was like, wait, I love this. Like this is, this is a passion of mine. So I started working at bakeries and um, different places like that. And then eventually started taking orders from people to make pies and, you know, cater weddings and just doing all kinds of things like that. And um, so I think in that sense, I, I did, but I learned so much from Stuart because while he is a numbers person, I am not. So he would (laughs) help me kind of realize like, okay, if this is how much my ingredients cost, I need to be charging this much because I had no concept of that. And um, so I think the pieces were there. And as we've built this business and even as he was growing his video business, I just, I feel like I learned so much just through what, he was doing and growing. So now stepping into Canvas, I'm like, I feel like, like we said, all the all the pieces have come together. <laughs> come, come together. That's yeah. so nice to hear. Would you also like to talk about um, how did Canvas come to life? We've not spoken about that. Um, 
because i'm sure it wasn't one moment i mean what was that process like did you like did you discover like a concept and you kept on working on it or was it completely accidental what was the story behind the canvas yeah so you know um i was in video production for 10 years and um you know i probably made hundreds of those top down videos where you somehow have to figure out a way to rig the camera up looking straight yes. down and show someone working um and you know i've i've done it all different ways from like you know having a a tripod that you literally like lean over and tie a rope to like a doorknob to keep it from falling over on you <laughs> while while you're filming all the way to the other keeping a the pile spectrum. of books yeah yeah exactly we hear that no one question. a lot yeah and um all the way from the from that end of the spectrum to to the other end which is like you know um huge expensive sets with you know lots of complicated equipment and like uh, you know giant jib cranes hanging a massive you know 20 pound camera overhead and um uh, you know anywhere like all along that spectrum it's like there's just it's all very difficult and even the ex- if you have tons of money and it's you 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 uh, are able to you know purchase the absolute best equipment available for that sort of shoot it's still obviously you're expensive, but it's also really difficult. There's a, 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 there's a certain yeah. amount of like know-how that you need to be able to, you know, get the camera in that position and, you know, be able to get a feed for your monitor and get the lighting set up right and not cast shadows on your, on your work area. So it's just tricky. I mean, the whole thing is like very complicated. And um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I think I just w- was working on those sets enough and saw that, that trend of overhead top down video, um, Kept, just kept getting stronger for years and years and still is yeah. today. And I, I imagine it probably won't go anywhere. Uh, and I was like, there's gotta be a better way for people to make these videos um, at their desk. So, I mean, that's where kind of the, the idea originated for the, for the product itself. And of course there were a lot of kind of little innovations along the way that I felt, I feel like from that initial idea made it into what it is today, which is um, it's today. more than just a, a functional piece of equipment. It's, it's something that really like, um, artists in general, but anyone who is a creator can really identify with, you know, it's not just a piece of gear that sits in a closet and you pull it out when it's, you need it. Like it's not only utilitarian. It also, also yeah, Mm -hmm. it it feels like it belongs on your desk and you're proud to have it on your desk. And, um, you know, that, that element kind of was always something that I wanted to incorporate um, and, you know, make it, make it a, a piece of gear that's useful, but it's also not something you have to hide when you're not using it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. I mean, the whole process took a couple of years and I mean, we, we, uh, we went all different directions playing around with ideas. And um, honestly, like I, I think uh, what it turned into was actually we, uh, if I can give anyone a, a tip as an entrepreneur, like what we ended up with is probably the most simple of all the ideas we had for how we were going to make it happen. We were trying to think of ways to use like a GoPro or like a built-in camera that somehow sends a feed to your phone or your computer or has a memory memory uh, port, you know, where you can put an SD card in or something. And all those ideas are great. Maybe one day we'll kind of venture into some of that stuff. But like to just get the product out there, we just kept – like one day I had that light bulb moment of like, why don't we just get people to use their phones? I mean, they've already got great, <laughs> a great camera on their phone. Uh, if you, you know, use my kind of knowledge from the video world, it's like, uh, if you like something well, it doesn't really matter what you shoot it with. It's going to look good and you can yeah. use a really good camera. And if you don't light it well, it's going to look bad. So it's like, you yeah. had the lighting thing figured out. Um, so uh, that was such yeah. a great addition because I remember at that point, uh, the top down holders were getting a little popular, like the you know, the phone gimbals and that uh, a lot of tripods yeah. and all of those things. But what was genius was that you combined the two. There were ring lights, but there were holders, but they were not coming together. Yeah, and right. that was such a perfect like. The moment I saw Canvas, I was like, this is amazing. Because I remember at that point, I was working from another studio and I never had enough light. And working yeah. at night was so hard. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. And I mean, uh, to me, honestly, that was kind of like a no brainer part. I was kind of like, yeah, of course we'll have a light built in. I, I was more excited about like our little rotation plate that we worked in yes. and like a couple of the other little factors, um, which I still think are super cool. But most of the feedback <laughs> yeah, we get from people is actually about the lighting and, yeah. um, you know, how, how great it is to have the different color temperatures and the being able um, to work at night. Yeah. Being able easily. to work at night. Cause you know, a lot of our people have like a lot of our customers do have, um, uh, other jobs or kids yes. or whatever that keeps them kind of busy during the day. And their only time to create is like that night time after work, after kids go to bed. So like giving them a, a tool that makes that possible um, was like a, a huge, huge value that we are able to provide. Well, and yeah. kind of talking about all the gear when you mentioned that about just if you do have the money to buy all of this expensive gear and cameras and lights and all the things, I mean, it's still a really big hindrance and um, sucks up a lot of time to have to yeah. pull it all out, set it up. Yeah. So that's why really a big a big thing that we believe in and why it's literally on all of our packaging is being able to create easily every day. And I think that that's a big part of it too, is like remove it, removing the hindrance to create. Yeah. yeah. So just that's being able cool. to pop your phone in, turn your light on well, and you're good to go. And that's, you know? and that's like one of the, like it being super aesthetic is just great because it looks really good and people like yeah. how it looks out of it and everything. But it's also, it has kind of a deeper purpose because that means if you do want to leave it on your desk and it looks good on your you desk would. all the time, it's easier to use because, you know, yes. if you decide to make a video. You don't have all to pull you, it and hide it away. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. You don't have to yes. go like pull it out of your closet and put it together and all that stuff. It's just sitting on your desk already. So you can just pop your phone in and start using it. So, um, yeah, that was kind of like part of the, the value proposition from early on for sure. Mm-hmm. Love that. Absolutely. Okay. So when you came up with the idea, when did, for the first time you shared it with Abby and what was Abby's reaction to that? I, I mean, great. yeah. And I mean, it did, it wasn't like, you know, one day uh, it wasn't there and then the next yeah. day it was there. It was like, she was kind of along the journey from, okay. you know, Hey, I have this idea, you know, where it started was very different from where it ended up. And um, okay. so like, you know, wh- where it started, it was like, it was a totally different product, but I mean, all along the way, Abby's never been anything but supportive um, and especially, you know, even when it came to the point of like, you know, when we did our first pre-order, it was a little, uh, it was, you know, there wasn't too much risk because it was like, we were going to take the orders beforehand yeah. and then all the orders and everything, but we still had to put some orders in, you know, we had to spend probably about $5,000. And I remember like, yeah. that was the first time for me, I was like, wow, this is <laughs> actually like, this is getting amazing. serious. Yeah. yeah. Imagine be setting this money on fire and, um, <laughs> <laughs> and but I mean yeah I think if I think if she had been like no this is a terrible idea we're never gonna do this I wouldn't have done it but uh, mm-hmm. but you know just having that support was like I think integral oh. so yeah yeah well, and it was it was that. definitely felt I feel like anytime you step out into something like this and take a risk in starting a business like it's scary regardless but you know like Stuart said we really launched in January of 2020 and then we sent out our first round of product March 2020 so at the very beginning of the pandemic so that in and of itself was so crazy to navigate okay what is this going to look like how are we going to do this when the world is shutting down like what does this mean yeah Um, but we just kind of, I think one thing that we've always believed in ever since Stuart started the video business is when a door opens, just walk through it and trust <laughs> that it's, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. And I think by saying yes to those things, even if it feels a little bit scary, like we've always seen the reward from it and yeah. um, it's just been fun. So I feel like I'm more risk adverse than he is. <laughs> He's like, all the risks, we're good. And I'm just like, ah, are we sure? But I always, I've, ever since I've met him, I've trusted his vision and he, he's so thought out. Like he doesn't, he doesn't, you know, take risk and not think about it. Like I, I can trust that he's really thought yeah. through all the steps and thought 10 steps ahead, you know? And um, I think that that's really helped me be able to 
say yes to all of his crazy ideas. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it doesn't even sound crazy when I even like put together pieces of a conversation. Stuart, you had like a 10 years experience in video making. You yes. also have a mechanical engineering knowledge and you were mm-hmm. also in the advertising business, which is, I think, and of course you had experience of, you know, creative entrepreneurship and like entrepreneurship. And on the other side, Abby, I think you also, you were a creator. You mm-hmm. were creating constantly and you again were complimenting him in a in his in in his entrepreneurial um spirit so it it feels like oh, this was just meant to be and mm-hmm. it came from a point of like i feel like um you know that it's everything is a risk but it's not like uh like reckless or like even i wouldn't say like not you don't sometimes you need to be more reckless but mm-hmm. it does feel like it came from a good grounding and uh reasoning and it made so much sense that it could come from you guys yes yeah yeah totally agree. yeah i mean i i think you know entrepreneurs kind of are known for just being crazy risk takers yes. um but i think it, which is true i mean you have to be willing to take a risk um but i always like think like at the same time it has to be a calculated risk like it's mm-hmm. not just like throw yourself off a building or something yeah. like you're very uh Absolutely. it has to be, it's it's all about mitigating your downside and um you know kind of calculating like putting the probabilities in your favor you know yes. so you're not just kind of like you said recklessly taking risks you're putting everything in place to you know give you the highest probability of success but at um, a certain yeah. point you've just got to like take the leap and um, I think biggest yeah. risk is biggest I wouldn't even call it risk I think mm-hmm. the biggest thing is you believing in your vision and in your own self I think that yes. is yes. the deal breaker for anything and everything that we do because right. everything else just I think these are pieces especially I feel like um pieces that come together every failed venture every experiment is like you even today like because even i did a lot of things and i felt like if i i wouldn't had those projects those failures i wouldn't have had the skill set that i have today mm-hmm. and yep. those skill sets are tremendously like they are a big part of why i am where i am because i yes. learned them the hard way some years ago yes absolutely couldn't agree more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I've I've had a hunt, a bunch of it, uh, a bunch of ventures as well, and I mean, none of them were very successful, but in the sense that they taught me, you know, what what it takes to have a successful business, how to think about a successful business, like um, being willing to ask for help and knowing the yeah. right times to like ask for help and that kind of a thing. In that sense, they they were all a huge success because, like you said, I, I would have never been able to, um, you know, build this business the way it is without the, those experiences for yeah. sure. Um, even yeah. like you know, my video business being a service based business, it's such a different kind of business model and a different yeah. approach. Um, the principles are still the same, kind of underlying uh, how you know treating people well, you know, creating good, good product, good, good service with your customers, mm-hmm. yeah, and doing the most excellent product you possibly can like there's just a lot of kind of foundational uh values yeah, that, that's that you have and that you learn when you try to you know get stuff off the ground yeah i think it's like entrepreneurship is also like this creative muscle that you keep the more you practice the better you become nobody Absolutely. nobody knows how to start a business scale a business uh build yeah. a team uh however i think however many books you read or um things you do and sometimes i feel a lot of times they also don't work in your favor because we are again believed to run things in a certain way but every business is so different every entrepreneur is so different every product is so different that we all are constantly creating our own ways to do things yeah and yes. nobody nobody is taught that way we just figure it out ourselves yeah yes absolutely okay my next question how did you did you so you guys are also um solely i wouldn't say solely but you're heavily focused on artists and creators mm-hmm. um 
did you when you were venturing and launching how did that come in place did you already have a connection which felt like it was a good market for you to and uh, like you know enter especially if you like illustrators fine artists or like that was your go to market when you ventured uh, how did that come into place i mean i would say it was just kind of the most um uh, intuitive place to start and um uh, we you know we you just always see the um you know, calligraphy artists wanting to show their hand yeah. movement and time lapses or like, just art in general is so, uh, it's so dramatic when someone has a great time lapse of them painting something really impressive. Um, and so seeing a, a blank canvas turn into, you know, a beautiful work of art, which side note is where the name canvas came from. But um, we just, you know, I, I just thought it was a great, it was the most obvious to me place to start. Um, uh, at the same time, I, you know, thought artists would, would appreciate the design sensibility, you know, the aesthetic nature of the lamp, you know, they'd be looking, they would care more about something that, um, looks good on their desk and can stay on their desk than say like, you know, a, a tool workshop where it's like, it's fine if there's just like a janky lamp hanging off a shelf or something. So like there was a bunch of, I, I, I thought, you know, it was a very intentional decision because, you know, whenever you're marketing anything, a product service you're trying to like sell anything you have to know who your target customer is yeah. and you have to really pinpoint that that person and create your your material and your communications that. around that and so um you know i we went back and forth with a few different kind of segments of, of the market but um uh, artists just always kind of took that top place to me i just had a hunch that they would be the most excited about it and mm -hmm. And they definitely have been. I mean, we once we kind of decided that's who we're going to uh, focus on. Um, you know, it all, it also kind of like fit with our kind of deeper brand value of like you know creating every day. Every day. Um, because, because artists are creating it every, or they yeah. they strive to create every day. So it just it was all very uh, it just meshed really well. Um, now all that said, I think you know. Um, I always anticipated to that we would broaden that that kind of approach eventually and make it. Uh, you know, there's a huge huge need for this in, in schools and teaching. You know, especially yeah. with all the remote learning and things like that. Yeah. Like, that's an area we really want to start speaking to. But um, more than that, you know, there's like uh, like I mentioned before, like a, a workshop, like a tool, uh, yeah. uh, welding and stuff like that, or food. Abby's always really yeah, trying to get us absolutely. in front of food people and, and um, every, like everyone we've shown it to, they, they love the product. And so I think there's a ton of opportunity in all those areas. The biggest hindrance is like, you know, like we said before, is still just not having enough product to really venture into yeah. uh, those other markets yet. So as soon as we yeah. catch our inventory up to the demand that seems to still be growing at kind of an accelerated pace, yeah. Uh, you know, we can start to branch out and I think we will eventually get there. Um, and, uh, but yeah, the, the artists, it was just such a, it felt like just so much kind of chemistry there from day one that that's where we just decided to start. And so all that to say, I think we're still at the starting line. I mean, I think we still have barely even scratched the surface of, of, um, oh you know, the total d demand that I think we'll see uh, <laughs> once we fully get this product out there. <laughs> absolutely i'm sure about that and i also feel like with covid with everything that's happened the rise of internet web3 or like you know all of these things yeah uh, products like these uh canvas has not only it's not only for creators of course like content creators artists creators but it's also become like a very basic um like it it, it slightly is going towards like a must-have for most houses um you know everyone because um i still i still remember like um i used to have one of the phone holders i'm sure you must know like you know the ones that had the claps and you could just like the boom box we have but it was just like a phone holder with this snake kind of a thing and yes. i remember that being like i used to use that a lot of artists and other people who do who do content or like create we would use them for top shots but yeah. that's also a product that I see a lot of people. And later on, I observed that that was also being advertised as something that a lot of people use uh, 
during night time or whatever time to watch tv on their phone netflix or something like that because we're constantly yeah. on our phones and today everyone is sharing their lives their work so much yeah. on social media so there's mm-hmm. so much more opportunity and it's becoming like it's it's blending that gap yeah yes yeah we've seen you know a lot uh, we've so we're old um <laughs> so we don't know too much about tiktok but um whenever me neither whenever, yeah. <laughs> whenever and also whenever, india has banned tiktok so even if i would ever ever take an interest i've never tried and then yeah. it it even made it easier i wouldn't i i yeah. don't have the guilt anymore yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we we you know uh, we still are kind of like getting our account kind of up and going, and it's it's kind of keeping it under the radar until we figure it all out. But uh, <laughs> but every time we uh, get someone you know make a, a video about us on TikTok, we always see this massive like surge in orders and buzz and everything uh, from people that have nothing to do with art, nothing to do with food. It's just, they're making TikTok videos yeah. and they're like, Oh, this would be cool for my TikTok videos. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, again, like that's kind of one of those worlds where I'm just like the, we haven't even dabbled. I think we have like yeah. 40, 40 followers on TikTok or something like that. <laughs> oh, wow. so we haven't, we haven't really done anything there yet, but once we start getting into that, I think, uh, you know, that's going to just be a whole, another whole like, market sector that's going to be very excited yeah okay which with the name of followers there's this very interesting question that i have in mind which is you know what i really love about you guys a lot of things let me point that out of course (laughs) i love your customer service which is something that um i have always mentioned because i think that this a lot of times it's especially I think creative people and I all honestly believe artists are one of the best customers you can have because yeah. Yeah. Um, it's because I just feel like it's such a special relationship because I think creative people the amount of nobody would notice details as much as artists or creative people would do because mm-hmm. they truly truly understand um those little things and I think they're also like I just maybe I'm just generalizing but I feel like the very warm relationships because I've had a lot of different customers in these 10 years like in different sections but I've never never been fond of um, artists more than anyone as my own customers yeah. but yeah. Um, what I'm trying to ask is you've also built quite a bit community your, of course, your customer service was great. Your messaging is very clear. Your aesthetic is very on point. Um, I'm sure all of these contributed to where you are. How has your experience of, you've really been able to build a very solid um, creative community and it's, it's, it's grown also at a very good rate. How has that been for you? Well, it's been so fun. I mean, I think my okay. Me, I'm sorry. You, I also need to know who's been operating Instagram. Me. <laughs> yes. That's when we're right here. I feel like once in a blue moon, you'll hop on there for a thing or two. Yeah. But most of the time, um, I operate the DMs, and then sometimes we have. Um, two other awesome girls, Hunter and Nikki, who help us a lot too. Um, and so it's truly been a team effort for sure. Yeah. Um, but that is something that I've just absolutely loved is being able to talk and connect with so many amazing people truly from all over the world. That is, like yeah. really, it just blows my mind that we're able to, to meet so many people from all over the globe. And um, so, yeah, it's been, I feel like it's been a lot of trial and error, a lot of consistency, just trying to, you know, create content and post regularly and connect with people regularly. And, you know, having a product based business, it kind of makes that a little bit simpler um, just because people are constantly DMing us or commenting, wanting to know more about our product, but it's truly for me led to a lot of genuine friendship and connection too. Like I have multiple friends that I've met through canvas that I am on the app Marco Polo with all the time and like have (laughs) 
literally become actual friends with. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, I've just, I've loved that. Um, I feel like recently we've been in a huge season of growth, just trying to figure out, like Stuart said, trying to figure out TikTok and even Instagram reels and things like that, like things that we're just trying to get that. It's just a constantly evolving thing for us as far as creating content for the brand. And I'll say like one of our, um, one of the things from the beginning that we hoped would help us and it has proven to help is the fact that our product is like uh, made basically for Instagram, you know, yeah. it's like, you, yeah, you, that's our true. Product, yeah. You, you use our product to make videos for Instagram. And, and so, you know, on our, uh, we get tagged just dozens of times a day, usually from people that are using it and just tag us. Cause they're like, I shot this with my canvas lamp. It's so awesome. <laughs> you know, and like, and we just love that. It's yeah. like the coolest thing in the world to just have a feed full of like, these people that we've never met, but we've been able to like add value yeah. to their life and their workflow and everything. And um, yeah, I talk about that all the time. Just how cool it is. Like if I'm ever like feeling bummed about something, I'll just log onto our Instagram and see all the <laughs> stuff she's reposted from people. That have been us. But it has contributed to a lot of that organic growth because mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not like a pair of socks or something where like, yeah, you know, it takes a lot for you to like want to share your favorite socks on Instagram, but this yeah. is a, you know, this is a uh, very kind of like natural thing to share about as you're posting. Mm, so yeah. that's been like our secret hack, I guess, but it's just, yeah. it's, just it's just built yeah, into the that's product. True. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's true. I mean, the coolest thing I think is just like Abby kind of alluded to is that I feel like we were really truly like you even mentioned, we're, we're growing at a, at a very organic rate where it's not like we got, you know, a huge viral video and got a hundred thousand followers overnight. It's yeah. just where we're really trying to do it in a snowball way where we're able to yeah. support the community and yeah. really and keep like, you know, uh, not, not get overwhelmed and, and, mm -hmm. and not have connection to people. Obviously we're not going to have connection to every single person in like a face to face mm -hmm. way that follows us, but to be able to just build something that like is healthy and uh, you know, not just like, a number on the screen or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, we have, we have, we're working on stuff now. We have vision for, to, to take that another couple levels up of how to support this community yeah. in a, um, a more direct way and, and continue just to add value to. I'm more um, excited now. What's that? I'm more excited to hear that now. Well, I love it. yeah, it's definitely still something where we're throwing around ideas and um, probably going to, ask the audience, so to speak. Like, I mean, we want to know, <laughs> like, you know, we're so, we're just holding everything with open hands. We're like, what is, what is the artist community looking for? Like, I mean, what else, um, yes. what other, like what other value could a community of artists provide that doesn't exist? Cause we've got this really awesome yes. vibrant community that, that we have yes. a, a, kind of a, an influence in now. Um, how can we, you know, Further What's the next glue. problem we can solve for you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How can yes. we? How can we be this glue that kind of binds everybody together in a deeper way and, and connects like things like this? You know, where we're all the way across the world, but able to have kind of like you know yes. this totally shared is. value exchange. I mean, I don't know. It's just there's a, a lot of opportunity. We're really excited about figuring out you know how to how to take advantage of it and, and create some you know continue creating value for for everyone that um, you know follows us love that i love that and i think you're already doing such a good job because you're not really sending a product you're also you're constantly supporting you're constantly building a community that's that's building each other up because that i think that's that's truly truly essential and it it just snowballs not one thing but so many things for not one person but so many other people. Sometimes you don't you can't even imagine like how much it can affect for someone's like, you know, um someone who's just recently started or like how yes. little things matter in the long run and we can't even anticipate at times. Let's well, also yes. hear the story about why is it called shop canvas? Of course, can shop is why canvas? Because it's a very tricky choice, I must say. Mm -hmm. because you know of how obvious and how many things a million things already out in the world why did you name it that 
Well, I think the the there's a couple of different layers to it. I mean, one is just the actual meaning of the word, which I'll come back to in a second. But two, I wanted to like name it something that is easy, memorable, like uh, recognizable. I didn't want to name it like you know extra awesome overhead camera mount, you know, like I wanted it just to be a word um, and, and yeah. kind of to give a little bit more of a teaser. Kind of the long-term goal is um, to have canvas be one of our products. And, you know, yes. there are lots of other products that are, you know, so canvas is specifically like geared towards artists and has that kind of feel to it, but who knows, there may be a whole line of products eventually and canvas is just one of the many products um, I'm now so, even more eager. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're talking. You know, many- recent, recently I've been so I don't. I'll tell you. So when I actually bought Canvas, which was again uh, 2020, um, mm-hmm. at that point I was um, I wasn't so much into um, videos, but I wanted to experiment the top down or whatever. Because yeah. I was into graphics and branding for so long, I always had this, um, this e, you know, to I, I just, I've, I have a million of these stands or holders and all of these things. But yeah. um, I think something that I feel recently, which I need to put out here for a lot of us, I've been venturing, and because time has also evolved, at some point we were all starting like those hazy pictures to move to this iPhone and iPhone 4, like, you know, all of the quality updated. And I can see a lot now because like even as professional artists, um, the image quality, the video quality, the game is only going higher and higher. Yeah. And I, what my biggest struggle right now is, I so I bought this camera and I bought this gimbal and all of those things because I thought like, you know, I really need to um, up my game. I want to start this and, you know, Hearts to hearts and my own, but oh my, I just had this yesterday. So I got this DJI Ron MS2, and oh my goodness, I had somebody else bought this for me. Some like I got it on order from somewhere, and I was like, I did not even imagine the amount of stuff it had. And I was like, oh my goodness, it was so overwhelming. And I was like, the biggest hindrance for me to to upscale from like my phone. To like a professional camera, especially when it comes to like video making, it's the it's this, you know, like you said in this conversation, so many tools that go into it. Unfortunately, yeah. I just can't plug my camera on canvas, but that would be so cool to have something which is again simpler, but also mm-hmm. more diverse. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, I mentioned that earlier that like, um, you know, I've been on video sets where we have, you know, the most expensive camera in the world. And if you don't light it properly, it can look worse than an iPhone. Um, so, and, and then I've also been on sets where, you know, we have a very modest camera, but the lighting is just right. And it, you can't yeah. tell the difference between it that looks- and like the most expensive camera on the market. So, part of kind of just our core, our core belief uh, behind this product is that, um, you know, it takes more than just a, or in some ways it takes less than, than a good camera to get good footage. It's all about the lighting and it's all about the, um, yeah. basic, basically you don't have to, the idea that you have to just spend more money to get a better tool that's more versatile to get the better image is not always the case. Sometimes you just have to know how to use what you've already got a little better. So um, that's that's something we're we're working on, um, you know, future products right now um, that are kind of along those lines. Like how do you, um, how do you take what, what, You've got give us some give us some insights. Give us some this we should have some edge on this one now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned the Ronin and you know, I've, I've I've used the that same gimbal many times and I'm the same way. It's like you hit the wrong button and it just goes and like go like goes crazy on you and then Can you imagine you know, can you imagine what would have like how would I have would have felt? Because I was like <laughs> What have I done? Because I was like, yeah. you know, if I'm spending money and like, why not learn it on the way? And then because I I am not someone who completely isn't aware, but oh my goodness, if someone really wants to learn it, it's so overwhelming. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. And so, I mean, that was kind of like from the beginning, we, we put on our Instagram, like, you know, dummy proof lighting, like anyone, you just hit a button and it looks great, you know, and and it may not be the best lighting setup in the entire world, but it'll look good, you know? And so we're just going down that road of like, all right, what else can we do? That's like, um, an improvement to what people are already doing literally with just the click of a button or, you know, something very, very simple, you know, not having to buy like, you know, these giant lights and reflectors and diffusion, but just everything's built into one product, flip it on and you get what you want to get out of that product very, very easily. Um, so specifically, you know, trying to, trying to come up with different lighting, um, options. So like right now it's just one ring light that goes straight down and that's great for just, lighting it up at a very kind of base level. But then what if you had other lights that were, you know, more directional that created kind of a moody look or, you know, shadow quality and all that. The ambient ones and then. Yeah. So we're, we're dabbling (laughs) with that right now. You would make our life so much simpler, so much simpler. (laughs) Yes. Well, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, again, trying to communicate that like, you don't have to spend money on like a better camera. You could improve your lighting and still use your iPhone and it would look great. So yeah. Uh, have you, have you wondered about making canvas or like any other product accessible for cameras? Because a lot of artists, creatives now use, uh, content creators now use um, cameras. And I think a lot of yeah. us who wants to create content on a regular basis, because I feel like Instagram, um, with the trajectory Instagram is growing and going at this point, I feel like a lot of audience will filter onto different platforms, maybe YouTube or like Discord or like all of these platforms that are coming up now. Um, And as much as our phones are easy and handy, um, making videos on like, like maybe YouTube or something, a lot of people are now choosing to use cameras, whatever quality or like, you know, uh, mm-hmm. But again, the hardest thing is you can't always have someone come record you or yeah, shoot for right. you. And it's such a big struggle. Have you thought about making something which also works for cameras? Because if that's happening, I am number one in the line. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have, I mean, um, I, I will say like our area of, like our our uh, area of focus right now is desk desktop okay. uh, equipment. And for desktop equipment, you don't really, you know, you don't have the need for a a giant like tripod necessarily. Um, So we may get there someday. I mean, I've even thought sizing this entire lamp up to like six feet tall could be really cool. You know, making everything bigger and stronger and a big camera inside of it. There's a lot of, I just coming from the video world. I'm like, there's a lot of cool thing. Like it's just basically a re a rethought tripod, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like a different kind of tripod. There could be something there. Yeah, that's Um, true. But really, we're just at this point, we're focusing on on the desk. And, and I've kind of come from a different perspective where what I see is like um, everything like, you know, 10 years ago to get um, a, you know, Hollywood feature type film yeah. shot like that quality. You needed a camera that weighed, you know, I don't know, 100 pounds with all these film yeah. reels and like, you know, this massive production to make it all work. But now you know, you can have a small little mirrorless camera that's this big and yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. For quality. sure. So I'm, I'm just thinking the bigger, the know, heavier, the confusing. Yeah. Yes. The way technology is moving, it just seems yeah. like it's going to keep getting smaller and smaller. smaller. And who knows? Maybe, maybe. And I think it definitely makes sense because like, even when I was looking for a camera, I think my biggest thing was I, my biggest request, I did not know like a lot of things. And I was like, what I really need is something which needs to be very handy. If it's too big, too heavy, too hard, yeah. I wouldn't bring it out every day. I want to yes. have something that I'm not scared of. I'm not scared yes. of my right. phone. And that's why I can pull it up every time I need it. But yeah. if I'm scared of my camera, it feels like a task. And I don't want to do that. And yeah. I want to see something, whatever I'm doing, it needs to be. Like these are basic um we as much as we want to like i think nothing can replace phone but i think in different aspects of what you're creating for um it just you need you i just feel like you don't have to be afraid of the tools that you're using if you're yeah. using something and you feel like and that's what i really love about canvas because since it sits on the desk i don't have to pull it out 
and yeah. I'm not I'm not afraid of the mess it's going to make because it's not going to make because I literally have to just pull it down and it's here and I pull it yeah. back it's, it's gone because a lot of times these logistic matters and all of these things make a lot of difference in the productivity that you're doing yeah yes absolutely yeah and, and that's the name of the game is how do you make it easy and like Abby said earlier eliminate barriers to creativity mm-hmm. and if you don't have to go to your closet and open up your big case and get out your giant camera and yeah. put the battery in put the memory card in and put the lens on and all that like if you can just put pull your phone out and put it in and, and get going it's that's a huge yes. win mm-hmm. amazing that is very true you've made so much so much easier for us uh, to at least work from our desk and thanks to you both i am so grateful because it's been a wonderful conversation i could go on for hours but i know <laughs> that you have things to do and i don't want to keep you uh, waiting for long but before i let you go i am going to have you on my rapid fire which i did mention before so are you ready ready i hope so yeah <laughs> it's fun it's it's how long do we have for each question you you really don't you just have to give me what comes to your mind okay. just okay. like you don't have time it has to be fast i don't know if there's going to be a buzzer or something <laughs> oh i'll be the buzzer don't worry yeah <laughs> i am the buzzer Perfect. also i'll have to be innovative with you guys now let's see okay so uh who's going to go first One Ooh. I lost the question you both of you need to come out like okay okay through it again we we'll go by Stuart and Abby okay yeah no it, the questions will be together i need to hear from both of you on it each okay. right. okay here we go hmm. okay one two three stop one thing you want to convey through your work in like in the create like in the entrepreneurship world oh gosh i'm frozen <laughs> <laughs> Um, I quick I quick focus on this one. I think for, for me personally is always wanting people to feel loved and cared for. Uh, That's the most important. You do that so well. Oh, thank you. I mean, I was going to say that we care. You know, we're not just a um, you know, a, a fake nameless faceless company out there. We want to be like, you know, approachable and and real and people know that we're authentic, a real, you know, real duo. Yes. I'll just cut it off there. I, I can ramble. You're doing a good. <laughs> no, you. I think you. Both of you are doing such a good job. You have like this. I'm a live example. I mean, we haven't spoken for. I mean, how many times? I mean, maybe five, six. But I've always mm-hmm. felt that warmth with you. Um, my experience of having like a client transaction with with you has been so nice. And otherwise, also, I've always like. It's just I think that energy and you definitely radiate that. So Aww, you're on you. point. Thank, thank you. you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. What's that one word that describes you the best? Oh, that's hard. Yeah. Do you, are you ready? No, neither. Okay. No. Um, uh, don't it's do it. That's very very smart. <laughs> you you got time. <laughs> Uh, I was just gonna, Are you ready to it? <laughs> yeah, I'll go. I was just going to say crazy. I mean <laughs> um, I just feel I feel crazy most of the time. I mean, um in a good way. Not the not the bad. Way. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. I, I, I'll just leave it there. Oh gosh. Got it. Um Abby, that's your now. First the first word that came to my mind was calm. <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. You balance each well, other. Well, that's out. quite yeah. a match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. That's that's what crazy I'm and calm. <laughs> Love that. That's such a good perfect complete composition. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Okay, next question. Describe Abby in one word, Stuart. <laughs> oh, I, I see. I thought this was I had this thought. This is coming. Our own word. Um, one um, word. Uh, one word. Quick. That makes it hard. One, two. Yeah. Uh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Can't lose with that one. You can tell that he's been married. You still have. 
Um, uh, I would s- describe Stuart as confident. Ooh. Oh, actually, can I add one wo- one more? Yes. Two words. Good word. Steady. I feel like he's always so he wasn't just very like very steady. The- very nothing really shakes him, which I think is very a very good quality to have when you're an entrepreneur. Yes, that's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> The one, the hardest thing for you to work with a partner. Oh, what's the uh, hardest thing like when you work? Us, with yeah, I'll go first. I mean, I think kind of what we talked about at the beginning: boundaries, like establishing boundaries and being able to leave work at work and come home and not not blur the two. I think for sure that for me that's the hardest. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with that, honestly, just that, I mean, it's true. It's, it's the hardest part because, um, you know, when, when we're here, we're working together and when we're at home, we're working together, um, sometimes on canvas stuff, but sometimes on house stuff. And so it is, it is just blurry, but I mean, it's also the greatest thing. Yeah. So, yes. so it's, it's hard, but it's yes, also indeed. awesome. Mm-hmm. Love that. Okay. If you could have a studio slash office anywhere in the world, where would you have it? Oh, that's a fun question. I, this is easier for me. I, I'd say Hawaii. Oh. Yes. Oh, wow. You've already I thought mean, of this one. Yeah. I mean, I just love the beach and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, something about Hawaii. We went there once uh, and it was awesome and uh, I'd love to go back yeah. and just love the beach. I love the whole vibe, the chill vibe. Um <laughs> So yeah, that's what I'm going to say. I would have to agree, but if I had to choose a different place, I would say like Colorado or someplace like that, oh, like yeah. in the mountains, because I love snow and it does not Me snow too. much in Alabama where we are. So to have oh, wow. someplace that we could go where there was snow, I would Maybe we can, we can have, have one each. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> one each. Please call me when you're there. <laughs> yeah. We will. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> Perfect. I'm coming. Let's get this done. <laughs> okay. What's your biggest source of inspiration? Both of you. Mm. Biggest source of inspiration. Man, I feel like so what many What inspires things. you the most? Yes. I mean, for me, I feel like cooking like being able to cook and just kind of be in my element doing that brings me a lot of inspiration. It just kind of gets me in my zone to, I don't know, create. Do you cook every day? Um, most days, most days. I feel like cooking has shifted a lot since having kids because yeah. um, before kids, I was able to spend a little bit more time like making more elaborate meals. But now I have to figure yeah. out how to cook how to cook in a smart way where I'm not spending yeah. hours of my time doing it, but still, um, you know, creating something delicious, which is still can be inspiring, like figuring out like, okay, what ingredients do I have and how can I make this delicious, but quick. Um, but also I think just, you are my, you're, you're the kind of mom that everyone loves. Um, I I say, um, biographies. I, I, uh, I'm not a big reader, but, um, as a young parent, probably am considered a big reader. Um, just cause you don't (laughs) have have a lot of time to read. time to do anything when you're a young parent, but, uh, or parent of young children. Um, and yeah, I just I like I love reading about all sorts of different people that are crazy historical figures, or even people that are like yeah. you know uh, still around today. Like I'm reading a lot of entrepreneurial books or biographies. Yeah, right I just finished um, Shoe Dog by um, Phil Knight, the creator of uh, Nike, founder of Nike, okay. and su- just super inspiring. Yeah. Kind of like you know, um, everyone's not like this, but he just kind of came up with an idea and traveled around the world and figured out how to do it. And, you know, he did it 40, 50 years ago when like, um, you know, if you wanted to communicate with someone across the world like this, it would take like <laughs> yeah. you know, three <laughs> weeks to send a letter or something. Yeah. Uh, and so just like, yeah, hear, hearing his story was, uh, reading about his story is super inspiring to me. Love that. That's true. Okay. Um, one eat. 
who's your go to person when you're in need of advice or you're in trouble apart from you i know that's going to say i was just say, <laughs> that was you yeah <laughs> um but besides him i would say either my mom or one of my you know best girlfriends like those are definitely the the two that i go to the most yeah i would say if i'm in trouble it's usually like some something business related so i typically go to like one of a few business mentor type people um that are you know giving me advice and i'm able to bounce ideas off of and stuff um i have like three or four real real close ones that i chat with probably every week or two love okay if you were to meet younger abby or stuart today what advice would you give them let's let's do this two ways first what advice would you give yourself each stuart okay. here you go um keep doing what you're doing doing good bud that's what i'd say <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, yeah i um i i think you know not to say that i've done a lot of things wrong along the way but like if there's one thing i'm happy i've done it's take a lot of risks and uh yeah never like kind of from the time i was really young my like motto was no regrets just kind of sounds lame and cliche <laughs> now but no <laughs> regrets <laughs> <That's laughs> uh, oh, i can i i am visualizing <laughs> so i mean if anything I, i would probably just tell myself to take take more risks you know just be you know, like um it's like the you know there's always time to be chill later in life and and just chill comes pretty easily but um <laughs> you know doing taking risks and going on adventures and stuff like that it's like takes a lot more initiative so it's like i would just yeah encourage myself to do more of that kind of yeah. stuff but i think what I would, about you abby I, i think i would tell myself to not worry as much <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's definitely my natural inclination like I have to be very proactive in yeah. not like spiral You are an overthinker. Yes, I'm an overthinker for sure. So I think that I would definitely tell myself to not worry. <laughs> Love that. Okay, now let's do this the other way around. What advice would you give younger Abby and younger Stuart to eat? Oh. Let's see this one. Uh, I think I think for you I would say I mean similarly like like I said before I feel like since I met him he's always just been so consistent and so I would probably say just stay stay consistent and stay steady in what you're doing because he's always been so good at just having a goal and like working so hard to achieve it which I've has always been one of the biggest things that I've admired about him. Love that. I would say, um, I would just be like, "Hey, just say no." In 2011, <laughs> you're gonna meet the man of your dreams. It's gonna be everything you ever wanted. <laughs> so, like, just don't worry about anything else. Like, is that is that for her or is that for your own self? <laughs> uh, got me. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I think I would say something along the same lines that she, she would have told young Stuart. I mean, just kind of like you're on the right track, like because I know you yeah. know when you're young, you're kind of like uh, questioning everything, unsure, yes. yeah, and everything, yeah. So like, yeah, so I would, I would just say like, yeah, I mean, you could, you could afford to, um, not overthink things. Mm-hmm. but i mean yeah. i think you i i i was uh I, i was very happy to meet young abby so i don't <laughs> oh. <laughs> and we were young i mean i was i was telling someone the other day like i was 21 or 22 when we met so okay. like he's been in my life like throughout my whole 20s and now 30s which are such informative tran- transformative yes. years of your life where you're just yeah. trying to figure out what the world is and who you are and all the things and so That's it's just true. been really cool to see like the journey that we've been on together for 
so many and years. i think what's yeah. even more beautiful is um when you see each other evolving together like in these past 10 years um you've literally seen each other from different shades of life because mm-hmm. uh when you transition from your early 20s to your 30s i think they are so like they're so varied colors and like it's yes. like complete it's it, it's like a flip side i mean at least that that's what happened to me i don't know yes. for you guys yes oh for sure absolutely yeah perfect one last okay oh. what is your what is your one or two word advice for creators entrepreneurs i i always love to call everyone creators because i truly believe that we're all in the business of creating so for people coming behind you what one or two words advice would you like to give uh if i can do three words this is also super Let's cliche see. It's also super cliche. I always had to say it, but I always like the, the the phrase "bet on yourself." You know, it's it's kind of a better yeah. better than believe in yourself slightly, but um, bet on yourself. Just that, like you know, there comes a certain point where you know, no matter what you're doing, you're gonna have people that are really excited about what you're doing and people that are like yeah. crazy. You know, and yeah. at a certain point, you just have to decide if you're gonna do it or not. And um, yeah, to, and like to just just just. In the words of Phil Knight, just do it. You know, just do it. Yeah. Like, just go for it. Bet on yourself, and um, and like, I mean, there, there's no one else who can't who is responsible for your success or failure um, other than yourself. You know, unless you don't yes, even try in the first true. place, and then it's like, yeah, I mean, you're guaranteed to fail. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, that, that's kind of like um, I, if I could go back and say. That's one other thing I may say to my younger self is put the, the bet on yourself. Yeah. You did though. You did that. Mhm. So you took your own yeah. advice subconsciously. Yeah, exactly. Could have done it more. But yeah. Um I would say stay true because I think yeah. that that's something and we touched on this that we that has always been very like it's been a core value to us as a brand is staying true to who we are and what we want to do and how we want to connect with our customers and anybody that comes across our website or our social media pages or whatever, like they're seeing who we are. And, um, you know, I think that that's just really important yes. as an entrepreneur and a business person is to stay true. I think it's yourself. also very important for us on the other end and it's yeah. it truly forms a bond that's very special also should i also want to add something you just said that you could be more and i just wanted to add to it miles to go before we sleep wait, wait. say it, say that again miles to go before we sleep oh <laughs> yes uh, yes yeah um, i think it's Robert never Frost. enough it's never enough yes yeah yes yeah is it the the is- um two roads diverged in a wood I, I know that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, it took yes. me a second. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. I love yes. that. Yes. So I think we are a lot of times we underestimate and I think we wouldn't have been I mean, you wouldn't have been able to create what you've been able to create today if you would have not had the experience of let's say advertising it wouldn't maybe it wouldn't have right. worked out the way it worked today or maybe you know the video making the 10 years of experience or abby being a creator i just yeah. feel like we always uh, feel that we would be but wherever we are today is the best time to be there That's yes right. absolutely we totally agree love it thank you guys you were really good Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, it's been so fun. Yeah, that was really fun. Same your time. Okay. I know now it's been long. Uh I just want to say a big thank you. Thank you so much. I really really enjoyed. It's been a wish of mine to see and speak to both of you and I'm so happy we did this. Before I let you go, uh do you want we will be we just spoke about when we'll be releasing this. Do you have any announcements to make? Do you want people to know about any releases coming forward? And of course, where can they find the two of you or and or an and um, shop canvas where they can buy it? Or if there's a quote that you would want to give it, anything that you want? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, shopcanvas.co is the website. Um, just you know, 
whenever this is released, go there and you'll see whatever we got going on. We have a lot of um, exciting things kind of planned for the rest of 2021 and into 2022. So um, um, lots of cool stuff coming up. We've got a new uh, product coming this month in December and then um, a new product mm-hmm. coming in um, February. I missed it. Do you want to say what it is? What either of you are? Um, I, I don't okay. want to... You that. can still talk about this product because probably... <laughs> I am being a little selfish at this point, but see, you would have already released it, so it's better yeah, you would well, talk about it. That's, that's true. So, uh, well, in December, we're releasing a an accessory um, that is basically going to enable you to start and stop your phone without touching your phone. So, a little room, a, a Bluetooth remote. Yeah. So it's very, very just like small accessory piece. Um, and then in February probably is when we'll release our next, it's another kind of accessory. So we're, what what we're doing is taking things one piece at a time. We're just adding on little accessories to the existing lamp, uh, while we're working on it, kind of our bigger upgrades like canvas 2.0, which hopefully will come out, um, sometime in 2022. We'll see. Um, but, um, but yeah, we do have a new, uh, really, really exciting, base option that will be coming out in February. Mm. Uh, so anyone who's looking for a base that is maybe even just slightly a step up and even more cleanable and um, will look great. In more than the wooden base. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've, we've, oh, wow. That's something very exciting planned, but, um, but yeah, there that's coming in February of 2022. Um, the one discount code that um, we'd love for anyone to use is Canvas 10. Um, that'll get you 10% off of any order. Um, you know, it's not limited by time or product or anything like that. So use Canvas 10. And as always, just reach out to us uh, directly through email or DM or whatever if you um, want to, you know, get even more insider info because we're, we're, we're softies. We're, uh, <laughs> we're, we're likely Truly. to share too much if you actually reach out to us. <laughs> That I can definitely, definitely uh, share personally. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. You've been just so kind and wonderful. I was so, so happy to have you both. And I can't wait to see you both again soon. Yeah. Also, awesome. one last thing. If you're both on social media, I've, I don't think that I haven't figured, but are you? Because that's... If you are, you can also share where people can find you if they want to follow you respective. Yeah, I think the one that we're most um, active on is our, you know, our Instagram at shopcanvas.co. So Perfect. Yeah. that we all know. Yes. yes. Yeah. I will I will link all these links um, to Shop Canvas, to Instagram, and of course, um, the product images and everything about Stuart and Abby. And you can find all the details in the show notes and the link and the code that Stuart just mentioned. So if you haven't still bought a canvas, you make sure that you take this moment and go check out shop.canvas. Uh, what was it? Shopcanvas.co. Shopcanvas.co. Mm-hmm. So, yes, that is it. And I will hope to see you both soon again. Yes, we hope the same. It's been so fun talking. Yeah, thanks for having us. It was truly my pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.